So, as of the time of this video, I've officially made it half a year on YouTube. Yay, me! So this is a small milestone for me, but given that I've made it these six months, I want to share some of my experiences within that first few months of filming, editing, and uploading, and what it's like starting on YouTube. Now, I don't want this video to come off as a, oh my god, I'm a content creator now, here's my expertise, and here's the advice I want to give to you. It's not going to be like that at all, and I don't want this to come off like an advice column or anything like that. But I do believe that the start of something can be as daunting and as frustrating as it is exciting, and it's important for us to talk about and share what the initial experience is like. So this video is going to be some of my thoughts and what I've learned in the first few months of creating YouTube content and just being a video-based content creator in general. And by this I mean creating content under my own name and with my own direction. I mentioned before I used to do social media for my university, so this is going to be a lot of what it's like starting something for me and not for anybody else. So let's just jump into it. So the first big thing is that batch filming is such a lifesaver. So right now I am in the job application mode, so I am looking for work and I'm applying to different places. And it's really helpful for me to be able to edit them, upload them, and schedule them for the coming weeks and months. So that way if I do have to move for work or if I have to readjust to a new schedule, I don't have to worry about missing any weeks or months because I have things planned out ahead of time. So yeah, batch filming has been a huge lifesaver. When I started YouTube, all the sort of advice that I'm seeing out there was that you have to post as much content as possible on a regular basis, start at like one video a week minimum, or or two to three videos a week and that can be a lot especially when you're taking on such a new task so starting small has been really helpful for me because I can focus on the bare minimum that I have to do and then add things little bit by little bit over time that is why my goal for at least the first year is to do no more than two videos a month even though I have all this time it's really helpful for me to just say okay two videos a month max if I hit even one video a month that's fine as long as I'm slowly getting used to posting content pretty frequently. What's often overlooked in something like a content creation process is all the work that goes into creating content. Sometimes we focus too much on the externals, i.e. posting and the subscriber count and the video count and the comments and things like that, but we don't think about all the underlying work that goes into creating those videos or creating that content. So starting small has been really helpful for me to just get used to the idea of putting out my thoughts on video for the internet to see and also to adjust to the schedule creating content in a sort of long-term way. I might be breaking the rule here and posting more than two videos in the course of a month, but take this as the exception. That's mostly for my benefit, but also for all of you. I want to make sure you're not staying on this content all the time. You show up, you check out the video, and then you go do something else. At least that's the goal. Number three, the shorts videos that are coming out on YouTube aren't that exciting and not that great. I think the vertical content will stay on TikTok and Instagram mostly. I've tried two videos on here. I may tinker with a few more but ultimately I'm not really seeing much from it and it's also not that exciting. So the biggest battle that I've had to face in the first few months of posting content and still something I'm dealing with is imposter syndrome. And I made a video, I'm scheduling it in the coming months, where I talk a bit about my experiences in imposter syndrome and what that's been like for me starting this channel, but that has been the biggest obstacle for me. Despite wanting to help students navigate university, college, and high school, I still second guess myself a lot when it comes to making these videos. This has taken up more of my mental energy than the arguments about what niche to define or what equipment to get. It really is this constant battle in my head about whether or not I deserve to be doing this. And the big thing that I come back to when I'm fighting my imposter syndrome is that I started this to help some of you. As long as I'm doing that, I'm on the right track. Now I am a bit of a lighthearted and outgoing guy, but I've noticed after watching a few of my videos that I come off as very formal and more serious. I think that's because working in social media for an institution or an organization, you kind of have to have some sense of formality there because you're not representing just yourself, you're also representing a brand. And I know there's more jokey organizations and institutions out there now, which is really good, but back when I started a few years ago, it was a lot different. So for this channel, I want to work on being a bit more outgoing and being a bit more like myself. And we'll see if that translates through the screen or not. Now this video might seem premature since I only have a handful of videos out right now, but filming with few to sometimes no views and only a handful of subscribers. To the few of you who have subscribed, I love you. I've had to learn very quickly to get used to the feeling of screaming into an abyss 
or talking to relatively no audience. That is the reality for the first little while on YouTube, and that's something that I've had to adjust to. So I've actually been keeping this channel really low key, and very few people actually know I've started it. And in a weird way, that's actually been really helpful for me, because I don't have anyone checking videos and messaging me with their two thoughts on it, or telling me things I should and shouldn't talk about, or questioning why I'm doing this, or just picking at my content in any way. By keeping this relatively private, I'm able to just work on this at my own pace, and that has been really helpful for me to figure out the kind of directions that I want to go in and to shape how I make videos and content to be something that's very reflective of my values and what I want to get out of this channel. So the big thing I learned from this is to just focus on your craft and not to worry about telling anyone about it. So having a process for creating videos and thinking up ideas has been really helpful for me. I use Notion to create pretty much all of my content and I have a sort of structure and a flow to how I approach content creation. It's set up to take any ideas I have that pop into my head and store them in a page so that way I can reference all those ideas at any point and then I can take an idea and move it into a template where I can flesh that idea out fully and overall just making sure I check off the right boxes before I upload that video. So yeah, having a process and a template has been really helpful for creating a lot of these videos. And then the final one, and it's kind of cheesy, but inspiration for this has really come from the process. So rather than look for inspiration and motivation anywhere else on the internet or in anybody else's lives, it's been really helpful for me to just focus on what I'm doing and improving and perfecting the process. And keeping the focus on the process has been really helpful because I don't look outward and get too obsessed with someone else's video that's going viral or somebody else on a forum who's seeing more success or feeling like I'm not getting any subscribers and nobody cares. It's been really helpful for me to just focus fully on what I can control, which is the process of content creation. And by focusing on the process, I've been able to get a lot better at content creation a lot more quickly. So yeah, focusing on the process is really helpful. Hashtag stoicism. So yeah, those are my thoughts about the first half a year on YouTube and being a content creator and all the things I've learned in the first few months. I'm really excited to see where this journey takes me, but no matter what, I've learned a lot and I'm really grateful for that. I will definitely do a year recap, so in August times, I'll film another video like this. But yeah, we'll return to the more formal style of educational content that you've seen in the first few videos. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it also set some context for kind of like what the channel is and how I'm gonna be approaching it. If you have any questions or ideas for me, leave a comment and share them or send me an email, thecivicstudent at gmail.com. I've been thinking about creating some social media accounts for this, but one thing at a time, I just wanna get used to creating YouTube videos and then we can talk about that down the road. Other than that, as always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.